Okay, check this out. Tufa casted, and these are beads. Are they going to be beads? Or these are the bead fails anyway. Um, Tufa casted, super thin silver. Um, it goes in here. Uh, you use these to pop out circles, which then, you know, are drilled and domed, and then you sew them together and make a bead. Pretty straightforward. I mean, difficult to Tufa cast this thin, and difficult to make a bead without ripping it apart but yeah anyway check out these bracelets tufa casted tufa casted tufa casted and these uh, are masters so i don't make anything with these um, i either tufa cast a new one or i use these masters to sand cast so these two are sand casted from this master okay so they're slightly different, but pretty much same texture, everything. This piece, this is Lost Wax Casted from my original master here. And then you have these, which are, these are manufactured bracelet blanks that come from the jeweler's supply. And this is 10 gauge thick. So, you know, maybe say comparable to this. The only difference is this is my original design from my original master that I tufa casted. And these are sand casted replicas of this master that were made right here in my studio, as we just demonstrated today. This piece. This is a lost wax cast piece that I took this original master that I made, my original design, and I had a mold made of it out of silicone, and it can be lost wax casted just to save a little time. Uh, that way I don't have to go back and recarve or, or you know, do any of this um, over and over and over again. You know, I can just get one of these made, and then this will act as my base for my bracelet or my piece or whatever I'm making which I don't feel like is that much different than this, except for this is my original design. This is uh, just a manufactured blank. So if you're fabricating, a lot of times you'll go to the jeweler's supply and you'll get a pre-manufactured blank. If you're saying, hey, I don't cast, or this wasn't casted, or you're saying, hey, my work's not casted, like it's some kind of like awesome thing. Well, I mean, all silver has to be casted. It comes from the ground as, uh, unrefined silver so they refine it and they either manufacture it into stuff like this or as jewelers sometimes we'll take scrap um this would be scrap for example clean scrap and we'll melt it and we'll cast it like i demonstrated earlier today either tufa casting sand casting or maybe lost wax casting and lost wax casting uh, oftentimes is done by like a third party you know like a casting company or something because it's very expensive to get set up for lost wax casting, um, you know, to do it, uh, I guess, and make a profit. And then these are manufactured from, uh, you know, refined silver, which is then manufactured into sheet. And then it's cut as jeweler supply, and here's what you get. Or you can buy a big sheet, cut it yourself, I mean, I don't know. But it's all casted. You know, so someone's saying, I don't cast, I do fabricating, like... You know, like it's super cool. Well, I mean, someone cast it here for you, okay? And then you buy this jeweler supply, which is, I don't think, any different than me having a, a piece of lost wax casted for me, except for this is my original design. This is not someone's original design. This is just straight up purchased at a jeweler supply, ready to uh, bend ready to stamp, file, you know, modify into an awesome bracelet. And people do great work fabricating. You know, uh, I do fabrication. So, like, this would be comparable to this. And if I'm making a bracelet, I'll take uh, either a tufa casted piece, a sand casted piece that I have sand casted, a lost wax casted piece, you know, like if I have a ton of orders and I want to try to get them out within, say, less than a year. Uh, I think last year I filled a... Uh, 250 or more orders and so anyway um that's why i started um taking a few of my masters and just the the blanks i call it a bracelet blank 
because this is a bracelet blank, right? A piece of silver, preformed, ready to make into a bracelet. Same as this. <clears throat> the only difference being, again, you know, this is my original casting, Tufa casting, that I've had uh, lost wax casted. Right. So anyway, so we start with a blank or a, a flat, just bracelet shaped piece of silver. And then from there, you know, just like this, you're going to stamp it, uh, solder it, file it, sand it, fabricate it, you know, whatever you do. Uh, typically, we'll do this by hand or using basic machinery uh, or tools. Same as this. I mean, look. So if I was going to make a brick slate out of this, then I need to shape it, form it, file it, fabricate it, sand it. Same exact techniques as, as you would for this. But for some reason, it's acceptable to do this, to go buy your little bracelet blank at the jeweler supply, or your sheet, or your wire. But it's not acceptable to have uh, your original design molded in lost wax casted. And I don't know why that is. I mean, it's dumb. But anyway, I just wanted to explain the difference. And that's why I took today and I did some casting demos and stuff. Just, I want to show you, uh, everyone, uh, what goes on, you know, and, uh, how you go from this, which is too thick acid, to this being sand casted, to this being long, lost wax casted. And I'll talk more about this later and we'll do a mold and we'll uh, show you how this process works. And then fabrication, which is where you take, you know, your silver that you get from the jeweler supply or someone else cast it. Also, you can do an ingot, which um, I don't do, and uh, I don't really have an ingot mold, but I could do one out of tufa. Basically, you just carve a carve a, a channel in a tufa, something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be really rough. And you would cast it, and then you would take that um, raw piece of just casted silver, and you would uh, hammer it down flat, roll it through a rolling mill, anneal it, and turn it into something like this. And that would be your base. And that's called the ingot jewelry. And that's uh, very labor intensive too. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, this is my studio. Not super fancy, but it's coming along. Uh, it's a shipping container, a 40 foot high cube that I built into a studio. And it works really well for me. Got lots of uh, workbench space. Uh, this is the Bonnie Doom Press, rolling mill, electronic microscope, which I basically just use for looking at pretty stones. And I can spend hours doing that. Or you can use it to find cracks in stones, things like that, fractures. Uh, vice, flux shaft, drill press, bandsaw. This saves hours and hours of time. Uh, it's just a basic little belt sander I got from uh, Home Depot, I believe. Yeah, it's really great for uh, flattening out bracelets, um, simple things like that. Um, lapidary machine, super old school. And this is, um, I kind of rebuilt it. Uh, someday I'm going to be able to get a new one, but, you know, I like it because it's kind of old school. It used to belong to Aaron Anderson. I bought it from him for like 200 bucks or something back in the day when I first started. Um, sink, and this is my pickle. And so I do my casting over here, and then uh, as I demonstrated today, and then once I get it out of the mold and everything, I'll bring it right here and I'll put it right in the pickle while it's still hot. That's it. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's that high tech or fancy, but um, maybe, you know, comparatively like to others. Um, it is insulated, so... Uh, you know, it doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold. I can put a heater in here. Uh, this is the first time ever that I've had a studio or a workspace with a roof over it. And I'm excited about that. You know, I'm excited about uh, kind of where I've got, uh, I built this uh, casting form or frame uh, yesterday to do some sand casting demos with. Uh, these are my old ones. Uh, they're made out of wood. The problem with that is uh, obviously look at it. Uh, they catch on fire so i wouldn't recommend that but it'll do in a pinch i put these together uh, before a market a couple of years ago I just never made new ones until yesterday but yeah i want to keep my sand in this 
ammo can because um, this needs to stay moist so it sticks together. And ammo can is airtight so that works really well for that. Yeah, this is my setup. I know a lot of people are interested because uh, I don't know if they think um, uh, someone, someone said uh, that I had an assembly line or maybe like some production line, but it's really just me. And I'm typically in here working. Uh, that's basically my life, so yeah. Uh, I would say by definition, assembly line or production line, it, it casts here, it moves down the line here to the pickle. It moves over to, I don't know, maybe some sanding or, or shaping here. I use the bandsaw here to cut the sprues and stuff off. Um, you know, filing and stuff happens here if I need to roll anything out. Uh, then forming the bracelet into shape, I, I can do that here on this press. Or I can do it over here on my stump, which I use more often. And this is DOM tubing. This is inch and a half and it slides perfectly over inch and a quarter. So if I have a bracelet, I can put it on here and I can just, typically if it's annealed, I can bend it by hand around the design, or around the, around the tubing to form the bracelet shape. Yeah, so I use, the, I use this more than, than the press because it's way faster. Because my press, um, it's a hand crank. So it takes a little while to, you know, crank it up and release it and all that but it works well um, and it really uh, keeps uh, stuff kind of in good form without bending it one way or the other yeah that's my studio it's not that high tech but you know hey whatever you know just do what makes you happy that's all I have to say um, if you don't like what I'm doing then I mean you know I really don't care I'm not doing it for you I'm doing it for me and uh, I'm really proud of where I'm at and I'm proud of uh, my success and actually for the first time in my life having a real workspace. So, you know, if anyone has any questions, just feel free to ask and I'll be here or just message me, uh, whatever. All right, peace out.